rejected. Basic income. Nobody should earn free money for nothing. Stacy. At least not by fiscal policy, perhaps by monetary policy. Good point. <laughs> According to the world we live in today. So the Swiss rejected their uh, basic income referendum by like, only 23 percent voted for it, 76.9 percent voted against it. But I want to look at some headlines where people are very, very happy to receive free uh, money from monetary policy and um, don't do anything to stop it and in fact vote to continue this policy. Vancouver homeowners made more money sitting on their assets last year than the entire population did by working. So this is the new world of free money from monetary policy that we live in. So while top paying jobs aren't easy to come by in the city of Vancouver, which partly explains its spiraling unaffordability, at least 75,000 quote unquote tireless workers in the British Columbia city made the incredible average rate of Canadian dollars $126 per hour. Sadly, the Hong Kong website uh, notes that wrote this, these workers are not among the city's human inhabitants. They are its single family homes. Putting this in numbers, the quiet efforts of Vancouver's houses, or more accurately, the dirt upon which they sit, <laughs> whose value exploded in the past year, were rewarded so handsomely last year that they made their owners about 25 billion Canadian dollars versus the total income of all the human inhabitants of Vancouver, they earned 19 billion Canadian dollars last year. Yeah, it's basic income for, for some. Yes. Okay, now that basic income is being, is being generated by the, these programs of easy money, you know, and it's being, uh, it goes through the housing bubble and, the, and, it's, and, and it's basic income, uh, yes. except it's huge. So compared to the stipend that was being proposed in Switzerland, this is an, a huge number and it's causing huge bubble problems in that sector. And uh, the, the basic income on offer in Switzerland, I mean, this would have been a huge money saver given the cost of administering welfare and these other aspects to the uh, machinery to keep uh, a certain population functioning. If you eliminate that and just do basic income, you save money. But it's also dispersed because the income earned by the non-human inhabitants of Vancouver, i.e. the property, is very concentrated. This, the story includes a map which shows the, in the red, the very brightest red uh, colored areas is the, uh, where the prices rise the most. So those people are earning the most. And where, just like in Manhattan, just like in any of these city centers, basically the closer you are to the New York Fed or the San Francisco F Fed or here, the van, you know, the, any of the central bank policies, wherever you are, the closest to the heart of those cities, that's where they dump the money, that's where the free money goes, and then uh, it... Right, you know, the real estate uh, axiom of location, 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 yeah. it applies to the monetary policies as well. If you're yeah. in the zip codes near Washington, D.C., near the Federal Reserve Bank, those property values are skyrocketing. If you're in the zip codes near... Wall Street uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut. Those properties are skyrocketing because location, location, location. As applies to monetary policy, it also applies to property property, where if you have a nice flat overlooking the, the sound or a mountain or something, that's going to be worth more. Well, same thing applies to having a house near the central bank. But it also shows you this sort of apartheid system we have whereby um, you know, the, the ordinary citizen of Canada who or resident of Canada that earned the 19 billion Canadian dollars, those people are monitored, their bank deposits are monitored, their um, incomes are monitored and taxed. The 25 billion is mostly from China, and nobody asks questions where that was stolen from. Of course, they don't care if it's stolen from another nation. They just care that they get the loot. But the, the ordinary citizen has to compare, compete with, like, uh, you know, people who could steal money. They're not allowed to do it. So they're like stock working, slave labor jobs. It, it becomes more and more slave wage labor. The, the more we rely on this free monetary policy, only certain select few, not like the basic income is that everybody, the very rich, even the likes of Warren Buffett in a basic income economy would receive the basic income of $2,000 a month. In, in, front, in uh, Switzerland, it was going to be $2,560 a month. So Warren Buffett would receive that, and so would the guy working at McDonald's. Financial engineering is a lot cheaper than engineering engineering. You know, it's, it's cheaper yeah. to build a conduit through a derivative from the central bank to a property speculator than to build a road or a bridge from one part of town to another, or to give portions of the population internet access, or to build out the infrastructure to generate genuine jobs, or to have policies that would keep 
high paying jobs, domestic, those things cost money. What doesn't cost money is to write a few quick laws to deregulate the markets in such a way where financial engineering, which costs virtually nothing, and allows for the piping and re-engineering and re-irrigation of the system to just whoosh, sloosh, slush and sloosh money over to uh, these uh, folks. I'm pretty sure you made up that word. Sluice. Sluicing, like you open a sluice gate, you're sluicing money. Uh -huh. You're opening the sluice and you're from the central bank and it's being sluiced into the Vancouver property speculation market. One of the arguments against basic income is that it will just encourage human beings to sit on their bottoms and not do anything all day. Here, nobody seems to con be concerned that this sitting on your assets is uh, just the same. Like th these people all across London, you see the same thing. Um, I'm sure 80 pounds is similar to 126 because house prices here go up 80 pounds a day. Houses earn 80 pounds a day here. This is a, uh, 126 Canadian dollars in Vancouver. Vancouver property prices are going up like 20, 30 percent per year. Well, in a, in, a, in a global economy where the environment is coming under such strain, doing nothing is an environmental plus. So by paying somebody two or three thousand dollars a year to do nothing, they're not going to go out and buy an SUV. They're not going to go out and buy some, you know, huge carbon generating, take jet travel from island to island. So they're actually contributing. They're probably contributing more than that two or three thousand dollars a year. You know, if you do the analysis in saved infrastructure damage due to carbon release. So they're actually contributing more to the society. If you look at the ecology as part of the economy, than a Buffett who's spending billions but acquiring companies that are generating like Gillette, you know, and other disposable razors. He's got an interest in that company. That's an environmental cost that he is being subsidized by free money. Where somebody sitting there doing nothing is actually carbon positive. They're not. Uh, exuding the waste that has to be now in an economically and ecologically challenged globe processed at a high cost. Before we move on to the next headline, I want to say regarding this headline about Vancouver house prices, that data came from mathematician Dr. Jens von Bergman, a former teacher at Notre Dame and the University of Calgary. You could go through his own his data and see whether or not you agree with it. But let's move on to the next headline because we can all agree on this chart. And that is the S&P 500. Uh, this is back in the bad old days. Remember, th this is the s 70s and 80s when, um, before Americans lost essentially <laughs> about 10% of their income. Their wealth has declined since then. But these were, that was, notice how stock markets were bad then the, the, compared to what we are now. Here we're almost hitting all time highs. And why is this? Well, more people sitting on their assets and f thanks to the free money given to a certain select few from the central bank. S&P nears all-time highs, global stocks rally as dovish Yellen unleashes animal spirits. Stock whisperer Yellen said all the right things when she sounded more optimistic than pessimistic on the economy. But while the economy is quote-unquote strong, it is most likely not strong enough to weather a rate hike in the immediate future. As a result, the S&P 500 climbed toward a record on Monday of this week and continued rising. After Yellen said she expects to raise interest rates only gradually and held off from specifying any time frame, a shift from her May 27th stance that a move was probable in the coming months. So everybody's interpreting that there, you know, the markets had priced in that there would be a rate rise in, in June or July. That's not going to happen because the remember the inhabitants, the actual workers of Vancouver, remember the 19 billion they earned? Well, that here in the same thing in the US economy, apparently there were only 38,000 jobs added in the past month in May. And that is well below the expectations of close to 200,000. Incomes are going down. So that means for those who um, are closest to the spigot, that means they get more free money. Like, not, not the people losing their jobs, not the workers who have no income, but the people who are sitting on their assets all day. I mean, as we've said on the show, every time Janet Yellen, or before her, Ben Bernanke, threatened to raise rates, we said categorically, it wasn't going to happen because you can't taper a Ponzi scheme. And, of course, they did raise rates by a quarter point not too long ago, but that's a very uh, market crash, by the way, and they did not follow up with any rate rises. And here we are with the jobs picture looking abysmal, as we know it would and said it would. The rhetoric coming out as well, you know, rate rises off the table. And, of course, that means, yes, more leverage, more asset buying, more S&P 500 highs, more property values go higher. And there will be a time coming soon where there will be this idea that, oh, my goodness, a rate rise is coming. We feel it. We feel it in my bones. I feel the rate rise coming in my bones. And then the market will sell off. And then, it'll, oh, no, it's, it's too early yet. It's too early. So uh, the debt levels are becoming 
uh, quite high and unsustainable. And the market, Mr. Market, will impose a rate rise on Mr. Market's terms, mm -hmm. which is different than Janet Yellen as Fed chief managing interest rates. No, she's she's abdicated that role. She's she's waiting for Mr. Market. Well, to do her job for her, and it won't be orderly. Yeah, and you can see, by the way, looking at this chart, what they have is it's not basic income. A lot of people, most people in the world, still live in this notion of an income world where you actually work and produce value. These are people who live, who sit on their assets, and they see, and they uh, have a basic yield. So the, the Fed provides these people with basic yield. And th the rest of the people in the world, the 99%, go looking to their treasuries and their chancellors and their prime ministers and their presidents and say, give us a basic income. The, and they're not going to the central bank and saying, give us a basic yield. Give us a yield out of this economy. Uh, well, well, I've been saying that for years. <laughs> if you're in the labor market, I've always said this. Don't ask for wages tied to inflation. Ask for wages tied to money supply. Money supply is up 15 or 20%. Your wages should be up 15 or 20 percent and you have some equality in the system but don't allow for the money supply to increase 10 20 15 25 percent and then oh we need a two percent raise in our wages that's not going to get you anywhere now also the zero percent interest rates have this a, a knock-on effect of a very bizarre story u.s to press china to curb industrial output so china has trillions of dollars they have all of these people in their country who want a middle class income. They, they want to sit on their assets all day. And in fact, they are. They're sitting on their assets in Vancouver and stuff. So what they're doing is just using this free money to produce <laughs> way more tons of steel and copper and every single industrial good that you could possibly need for the next 20, 30 years. And it's just sitting there and flooding the markets. And now the US Treasury, Jack Lew, is saying, oh, we don't want this. Remember, Jack Lew. U.S. Treasury, he's the 99 percent. He's uh, talking for the 99 percent people who think they need an income. So, well, they're losing their jobs because of all the free money floating into China and then coming back as industrial goods. Financial engineering means allowing the money to bypass labor, bypass workers, bypass the 99 percent. That's what financial... En we got to go. We got to go to the second <laughs> half. Thank you. We have to bypass this ending you were going to give. Woo, we're going to head to the second half of the...